What's up YouTube? This is Eric and this is my experience day one of getting sober from alcohol, coke, and just totally ruining my life. So hopefully somebody out there hears this message. It helps you along on your journey because it's a hell of a fight, but you can do it. It's one day at a time. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and check out all the links below for all my social media along with my Discord mental health. Again, it's people helping people. You got this. It's a together thing. It's a we thing. We can do this. What's up YouTube? This is my day one experience of just getting sober. I don't know about anybody else out there, but man, if you're in day one right now and you have hit that rock bottom and you decided I got to change my life, I feel for you. I mean, my day one is burned into my head of what it was like getting sober. Uh, when I realized I was probably an addict looking back at it, I probably starting right around 14. The, I started getting drunk in school. Uh, it, it, it just progressed through life and there's so many different times that you know I wanted to get sober but I had never hit that bottom yet and on July 24th man I hit that bottom I, I'd lost my job I had uh, you know was losing my wife at the time you know, we were getting a massive fight and you know alcohol and coke was my salvation you know that was my healing uh, it's what is my escape from this world was Day one, I mean, it, when I finally decided to get sober, I was drunk off my ass. I was laying in bed fucking crying, telling myself, how, how did I get to this point? I mean, I just literally destroyed my life and just flipped it upside down. And day one for me, I mean, I woke up uh, July 25th, and uh, that night I had decided, crying in bed next to my wife, that I was never going to drink again. I was never going to use again. So when I woke up the next day, it was fucking hell. If anybody knows what I'm talking about and has been there, it's it's a nightmare, but you make that decision. And when I decided to get sober, I, it wasn't like, hey, I'm going to go into rehab or I'm going to go into uh, AA or NA or anything like that. I, I never had issues when it came to meth or and I never did heroin. Uh, meth was always on an accident. Three times in my life I did it. I mean, I, I did a lot with LSD uh, and acid when I was younger. But my addiction really evolved into, you know, not even opiates. It was just, it was alcohol and cocaine. And even now when I talk to people and I'm like, yeah, you know, I was addicted to alcohol. They're like, oh, you weren't really that addicted to anything. You know, I, I did this. I did heroin. Or I did, you know, whatever it is that you're fucking going through, I feel for you. Because that first day, I woke up. I was hung over as shit and decided I was going to empty out all my alcohol. I emptied out all my alcohol. My wife had already left for work. And I'm sitting there, and I knew what my issue was, but I didn't know how to talk to anyone about it. I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. I just wanted it to stop. I couldn't focus. I just I knew my life was for shit right now, and I'm sitting there just like contemplating my life of what am I even doing, because it had gotten to that point that I didn't think life was even really worth living anymore. So I decided that I had to just admit that I was an addict. Um, all the alcohol in my house got dumped out. Not that I kept much alcohol because I was drinking three-fifths of vodka a day. Uh, I was either Blue UV, Patron, um, Hornitos, or 99 peaches, bananas, anything that had a high alcohol content. And my drinking started at 7.30 in the morning, so by about 8 o'clock, I'm already starting to shake. And if you ever quit alcohol before, your body craves that sugar. And so thankfully, I had some candy that was in the fridge, so I had to start macking down the candy and smoking cigarettes like nothing else. And I didn't know what to do. And I was scared. I just knew that I had fucked up my life. So I'd been to AA before, I'd been to NA, and I knew that I had to just start telling people. And I didn't want to get involved in the program or anything like that. I, I, I wanted to quit on my own. And so I told my father-in-law that I was an alcoholic. And I started being honest and started calling people that day and being honest with them of my problem. And at the same time, I'm going through the shakes. I can feel the urge. And I literally took my keys and fucking hid them under the couch so that I wouldn't leave. Because I would have left the condo like multiple times to just go in and end it because it became fucking painful. The shakes and the sweats were my biggest physical withdrawal syndromes. Because I had been pumping so much alcohol into my system and 
Thankfully, I had done all the coke in the house because, yeah, I, about noon, next thing you know, I'm going through all the cabinets trying to find that last little little bit that I had, and I didn't realize that I used it all because I found the foil, opened it up, and it was all gone. And I just started to kind of panic. I ended up pounding a bunch of Advil and just slamming water left and right. I, I was making coffee and drinking coffee, and I had to just keep myself fucking active. So I'm, I'm on the phone with everybody that I knew. Just saying, hey, I'm an alcoholic, you know, I, I need help. I got on the phone with my parents. Uh, I got on the phone with my dad. I got on the phone with my mom. And it was scary. Like, I, I tried to quit before, and I was so worried that this was going to last for just a couple days, and then I was going to I was gonna end up relapsing and just going back to my old ways. But I had so much desire behind me that I didn't want to screw up my life anymore. And thankfully right now, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 21 months sober. It was a challenge, though. If the the withdrawals and, and 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 needing that in my stomach and needing that in my system and sitting out on my balcony just fucking smoking cigarettes, just starting to dry heave, and feeling all the pain, like aches and pains and body pains and headache, just start coming to me. And I'm tired, but then I was kind of energetic, going, "The what the fuck have I done to myself?" And the more that my body started hurting, the more that I was like, "Dude, I gotta kind of push through this." I, I probably should have went to a rehab to get a little bit of treatment to make it a little bit easier, but I didn't. And I'll tell you this, I mean, that day one, the pain started really hitting about noon, one o'clock, because of my body wanted wanted alcohol. Um, I wanted Coke to numb it. I wanted to get, I wanted to feel that flying feeling again. And thankfully, as weird as it might sound, I mean, I took my Adderall like it's always prescribed, like I do every day. And it kept my focus on that I can't drink. And talking to my wife, even I told her I'm alcoholic. You know, she was, I talked to her grandpa, told him I'm an alcoholic. They wanted me to get in touch with somebody who was in the program. And I didn't really want to talk to anybody in the program. I was going to do it myself because I was a fucking man. I had an ego. Thankfully, I got into the program because I wouldn't have made it if I didn't. But your whole body changes, your whole mentality changes. I mean, I felt like I was in a fog just cramping up feeling those body aches and just wanting to leave the house and just wanting it to stop and wanting that pain to stop but realizing that it was only temporary and focusing so much on how much i've ruined my body and ruined my my life that it's not worth it to leave you know if you're you're on that day one man just Keep yourself active. That's what I had to do. I had to keep myself active all day long. I had to get talk to as many people as I could all day long because I found that at least me talking to people, it, I wasn't going to leave. And I started going through and throwing out all my fucking bottles uh, that were empty just because I didn't want them around me because, I mean, even dumping those out like that, I was tempted to, like, take the last drops and, like, come on, just give me something and drop on my tongue. And I didn't, and I'm proud that I didn't. And I, I just kept celebrating every little victory that I had every every moment of that day because it was the whole day was like minute by minute. And I just wanted to use it and, and I just rocking myself. I mean, I'm watching TV, just, just anything to keep my brain occupied from leaving out that front door and going and getting messed up. Uh, I ended up taking like three different showers that day and getting into the cold showers, just trying to get my body temperature back down trying to get the, the the just the grime and the sweat because i mean i could i could smell the stench of it coming out of my pores and it was gross like my, my clothes were getting fucking soaking wet and it, it was like fuck, dude this is alcohol like i've only been off of this for not even a day and i'm like i'm saturating my clothes and it smells nasty and like trying to go to the bathroom like my whole body system has been fucked up and like, if you have a squatty potty, that shit helps. <laughs> because, I mean, you're in there just trying to, like, oh, my God. And, and it, you're cramping, and I had no appetite. I just, I just wanted it to, like, stop. I wanted it, like, fast forward, like, a month, two months, a year. And, like, be like, please, just get this all, like, fix itself. And that was my start. I mean, and what helped me the most, though, out of it all, and what made that day one so important to me, is the fact that I reached out to as many people as I could and just started telling them I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. 
And they were like, what are you talking about? And all of them knew I was. And they're like, oh, so you're going to finally admit your drinking problem. You're going to admit this finally. And it's like, fuck, did you, everybody knew but me? <laughs> like, well, where the hell? But I also know what it's like on the flip side of it of, I mean, you can't get anybody to change. I mean, my, my, my rock bottom smashed me in my face. I mean, I've literally pretty much lost everything in life that I had created, you know, over fucking 36 years. And it was terrible. And I remember on the phone just even with my parents and just, you know, I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm, I'm watching my marriage just dissolve. But I knew that if I quit, it might not just, it might not fix everything. But maybe I can make it through it. And I just kept telling myself over and over that it's worth it, that it's worth it, that it's worth it, that you can do it, that you can do it. And it was like positive affirmations just sitting there rocking myself like, don't drink, don't drink, don't drink. And I had to focus nonstop on not drinking and, and fucking writing notes and fucking... Like your brain is like there's so much of a fog and so much cloud in there that it's like like the clouds would separate for a minute and start writing down like all these thoughts of like, hey, I got to do this and, and this is what I need to do too to fix my life. And and there was these little, little moments of like motivation, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that this time, you know. And all I wanted finally at like five, my wife got home. I didn't know how to communicate or talk with her now. I mean, I, I hadn't been sober around her in fucking forever. And, like, I, I even told her, like, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm, I'm an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. And I just kind of kept repeating that. And we're sitting there, like, watching TV. And she helped me eat and stuff. And she knew that there was a problem. Um, and she just was like, if you, you know, if you're going to do it, then do it. And so I did. You know, but I didn't do it for her. I, I did it for me. Because I didn't know what was going to happen in the long run. All I remember is, man, when I finally hit that fucking bed, like, I couldn't sleep. I, I took a ton of Advil PM, some melatonin, a bunch of water, and I literally was like in bed shivering, and then I'd get fucking hot and throw it all off, and put it back on top of me, it, and I just, I wanted, I wanted to even just, it was like, fuck it, okay, if I don't do the alcohol, maybe I can just do some coke, but I didn't have any coke, and I knew not to call anybody, and so I just had that burning feeling all day long, just in the pit of my stomach, where you just want to kind of curl over and like clench yourself in. Because it's a fucking knot and it's not undoing and your head is just like you want to beat your head against the wall. Because it's so clouded and, and you know that it's clouded. Day one for me was a nightmare. And it sucked. And yeah, it was only alcohol and coke. It wasn't fucking heroin. It wasn't benzos. It wasn't anything like that. But I, it, dude, I know what it's like and I know what the pain's like. But I can tell you this, if you're on that day one, your, your life isn't going to get miraculously better and you're going to win the lotto and like shit's all going to fall into place, but you can handle it so much easier. So don't give up if you're on that day one, man. Uh, I got my links down below to all my social media. It, 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 hit me up if, if you need something, you know. It, it, get into the mental health discord that I got. Get into Derek Lambert's Rewired Addiction Discord. Get into a meeting. You know, let people know that you're an addict and ask for help because that's what got me through it. And I want to share a lot more on my sobriety story of just what it was like for me getting sober. Because, I mean, there were so many different things, times that I, I wanted just to relapse or fucking first time in a, a liquor store just to get some cigarettes and, and the clenched up feeling of like, dude, if I, if I just, if I get a couple of these, maybe I can control it this time. And you don't have any control over it. We're an addict. It isn't, it isn't going to happen. So, I mean, anybody out there right now on day one, my heart goes out to you, man. You can do it. It does get better. And it is so worth it. It's painful, but it's worth it.